Okay, so we continue with one more scenario uh, using the knife. As we discussed earlier, there's various positions around the body where the knife could be held. Before we worked on the position in front, the knife directly in front of me, now slightly more tricky, if I can just use uh, Dave for a second, um, where the knife is, is, is held behind your arm. So more of a sort of concealed situation. So someone not blatantly being in front of you to the side, you haven't got as much uh, vision and uh, the idea is that the knife is, is, is relatively close to you. Okay, so that's the problem. The knife probably touching the body, or at least touching the jacket or something, and they're threatening, asking for whatever you've potentially got. Okay, so we'll show the, uh, the full technique. Don't seem to work with Magdalene on the right side. So we'll show the technique first. <coughs> Once again. Okay, cool. so let's just talk through what happens. Like if you can go to the start position. So what happens is that the knife is, is behind the arm of Magda. That, that's important to understand. So Magda first one turns and looks to see what the situation is. And then what she does is make a deflective movement with her forearm. So sending the knife away from her body and her body away from the knife. We spoke about that earlier. At the same time, as quickly as possible, she's going to control Dave's arm by wrapping and hitting. Stop for a second. The idea is wrapping and she's going to bring her elbow right in close to her ribs. Okay, so she's going to bring her elbow right in close to her ribs, nice and tight. Okay, the reason is that having the elbow nice and close, you're starting to use your back muscles rather than your shoulder joint when you're relatively strong. At the same time, an elbow really coming to hit memory and guy hitting as soon as possible hitting strong towards the face. From there, control of the person if needed, strong attack towards the groin area, maybe strong attack to the back of the head, and make sure they are really not thinking any more about hurting you, and then control of the knife. What happens here? So her, her right hand goes to control the knife hand, so again, she has control of the hand, which knife obviously can't drop it, can't do anything else with it. She brings her left hand up to secure the wrist, as we did from the previous technique of taking someone to the floor, and steps away with the knife away from her. From there. Controlling him, you see there's manipulation through the wrist joint, the elbow joint, and the shoulder joint. He's facing away, she has control. He's relatively groggy at this moment in time, hopefully. And the idea is then she takes the knife safely, keeps it low, and hides it behind the body. Good, once more, so we'll talk through a little bit quicker. Good, so she makes her hand a defense with her arm, defense with her body, strong counter attack, pulls the knife in, got hammer fist, knee, various different attacks to, to send him down moves away, keeps control and takes 